let's just give some background how you got started in um, music and why you chose barbershop. Well, I was I was always a, a singer. I was raised in a in a family that sang all the time. All, both all sides of the family sang. My dad played the guitar, and uh, he always had a group going for years and years. My mom would sing the alto, and he would sing, and then he'd have. You know, usually some high school kid that was in our, he was a church choir director on the side. And so he had somebody that, you know, would sing another part and whatever. And uh, he traveled around quite a bit with that, even after mom quit singing with him. And uh, so I think I learned to sing harmony because we'd be riding around, the, you know, around, around going somewhere. Mm -hmm. And he'd start singing, mom would put the alto in, and I had to sing the other part, whatever it might mm -hmm. be. So I just developed the ear, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so I loved all of that. So I, I was active in high school in choir, all choral events. Um, it couldn't be in the band and choir because you had to make a choice at that point in time. But there was an established ensemble, and they were called the Beauty Shoppers. So I was fortunate to make that. First year I sang baritone, second year I sang lead. Was this a barbershop group? It was, was a barbershop. Four, four, no, it had nothing to do with Sweet Adelines. Is before the Young Women in Harmony thing, so you know, but we sang basically all um, cordettes music, Mr. Mm -hmm. Sandman, and all the things that they sang. We had books and books by the cordettes. Uh, side note: When I was judging once at International, uh, we recognized, and the lady was sitting down here who was a member of the original cordettes, and so I went over and told her that I had enjoyed all of her music and that I'd sung it in high school and everything. So she signed a picture and gave it to me. It was very, pretty special, anyway. So, uh, so we, this is really this is weird because we were um, there was a local barbershop chapter in our little town in Texas, it was small, but we were invited to sing on their afterglow, the party, you know, their cast party, and there was a group there that were from a Sweet Adeline's chorus from Amarillo, Texas, which was about sixty miles away, and there were four old ladies. And they'd had too much to drink, and they got up and sang down by the riverside really poorly. <laughs> and I said at that point, I will never be a sweet animal, and that's for sure. That was your first that impression? That was my first impression. So uh, I, when I went to college and then when I was in grad school in Washington State, I, I always had little groups. Uh, I played a banjo and we'd do folk music because that was big during the time. Did you have any formal training? All uh, just just music. Uh, well, I played the piano. <laughs> I took piano lessons for about four years, but I was a tomboy and would rather play football and baseball mm -hmm. than practice. So I, mean, I learned to read music during that, but you know, whatever. And so everything else just came from high school. And I was in the women's choir at college uh, one year, and I didn't have time after that to take it so no the answer is no so so when I got married I married met my husband to be out in Washington State we went to, to grad school and he had uh, sung in the barbershop boys quartet when out in, in Washington when he was in high school and after he, he was in the army and after he got out of the army he was in San Diego and there was a very well-known male director there in chorus so he sang with them, so he got the bug, you know, mm -hmm. really early. So uh, when we decided to move to Rochester, the first, we got there on the weekend, on Monday, uh, Tuesday night, he was off, he had looked up where the barbershop chapter was. So for, gosh, a, a year and a half, at least, I followed, you know, I was a, a wife that went around to all things, because I loved to hear the singing, and mm -hmm. he got in a quartet, and you know, all that stuff. And I had met a lot of the people who were in the, uh, sweet outlines there. Were you doing any music? Huh? Did, not doing anything, just sang in church. That was it. So, uh, he just kept bugging me, and he kept bugging me. And all I could think of were those four ladies that shouldn't sure? be singing, you know? <laughs> and so, finally I said, look, if you shut up about it, and quit bugging me, I'll go. You know, okay, we agreed. Well, that was it. I mean, I was hooked the first night. Was that Sweet Adelines? Yeah, that was the know? Rochester chapter of Sweet Adelines, yeah. So, um, so I sang with them, then a couple of years later we moved uh, to Ohio, and so by then we uh, had 
I did, I found out where the, the chorus was here, so I joined the Columbus chorus. That was the only one that was here. Did you have any any vocal training then when you were with the Rochester group? Oh yes, yeah, sure. We went to schools just like we do now. Uh, you know, I mean, I've probably been taught every right and wrong way to sing through all the years. You know, it changes all the time. I think now we're doing pretty much what they do at in most vocal, you know, music academies and so forth. One interesting thing, um, well, now I just forgot what it was. Oh, when I was in Rochester, um, that was my first quartet, and I got pregnant when we first moved there, and I didn't think you could sing if you were pregnant, you know. So I joined in in the spring, our baby, and there was a contest coming up, and I was already, like, you know, three months pregnant. So I didn't compete that first year. So I didn't really know people as well as I should. I mean, I knew them, but I didn't know them, you know, because I wasn't competing. And um, our baby was born in August, no, in June, and um, she died at nine days. She, they found out on an op house, but she only had two chambers in her heart. Oh, my God. Well, here we were in, in New York. My family was all in Texas. His was in Washington. I mean, you know, we were just there. And so we had a memorial service, and, and my folks came, and his brother came, I think, and... But anyway, there were all these people, and they were from the barbershop courses and the sweet Adeline courses. And I thought, I have a family, <laughs> no matter where you are. I mean, that was just really endeared me to so many people there, you know. Uh, so I made a friend uh, in, the, in the Rochester chorus who became my dearest friend for life until she passed away quite a few years ago. Uh, I still keep with the, up with her kids on Facebook, but who have their own kids and grandkids, you know, by now. But anyway. But she became my mentor, and when I didn't understand something, she would teach me. So it might have been about singing, or about arranging, or about anything. Do you she, arrange all of them? Just tags and stuff like that. I mean, I'd like to, but it's not, I don't play the piano well enough to say, I mean, I have to put, poke it out, you know, so I think that gets me from it. Anyway, so we moved here, uh, very soon got into that quartet that was the comedy quartet called The New Tradition. and. Uh, we sang on every Ohio and Region 4 chapter show as their guest quartet. I mean, we traveled a lot, we performed a lot, uh, we went to international every year not to compete because we, we never came higher than third at regional. Mm -hmm. But we had, a, you know, a whole slew of fans. Um, and we made enough money that I never had to pay any expenses to go to international. We made enough to, you know, to to keep us in costumes and so how did you, trips. How did you figure out your routine? Was one of you more comedic? Uh, or did you do this with a coach? No. Uh, we'd sit around and discuss situations to come up with a costume and whatever. We were we were toy soldiers one year. Uh, we did a whole thing with boas one year. I mean, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, I was the MC and I was the one who kind of guided us through all of this was also I said I didn't arrange but I used to we used to we couldn't order music off online like you can now and but you know whatever so I just take things off of albums so we had a huge variety of songs that we sang and there were some that were really funny one had 27 key changes in it that we'd heard some quartet do you know so we had really so fun did stuff you have and stuff. or you just picked a song and I just picked a song and I'd sit down we had an old uh, organ in the house and I sit down and uh, I mean we could you know you had to find somebody that would send you something because you just mm -hmm. you know it wasn't like it is now but I'd hear so I sit there and pick out the melody and I'd listen to the parts and figure out what they were and then write them all down so I mean we had you know 40 songs in our repertoire it was it was quite interesting but um, so we had a really good time and then it just kind of got old I wanted to get in a better quartet I mean, you know something that was a little bit more contest oriented. And uh, I was going to tell you one th funny thing when we happened in the Rochester. Uh, we had 10 of us that went to our very first international and nobody had ever been to an international competition. It was in Salt Lake City. And our rooms were quite far away. Well, I mean, quite a few blocks, you know, so. And there weren't buses running. So we rented two little car, two cars. Uh, I know the one we were in was a Volkswagen, a little Beetle. 
And with all these people, there were no tenors. We had basses, baritones, and leads. You went to contests with no tenors? No, we were we were just guests. We were just vi we were just oh, viewing it. Okay. Yeah. But we but we wanted to sing, you know. But we didn't have any tenors. So we discovered that when you got into the car and opened the door, there was this beep, and it was the same pitch that the, the, <laughs> of the tenor post and strike up the band that the chorus had been singing. So everybody take turns of getting into our car, and we'd open the door, and they'd go, beep, and we'd go, da, 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 da. <laughs> It was totally crazy. Anyway, that was my first big thrill of the internet. That's a, mu a music nerd. Oh, it took. totally, totally, <laughs> totally, totally. Anyway, uh, so we were singing in, in uh, Columbus, and we had some uh, great, it was, uh, the course did quite well for a few years, and, and things kind of started going downhill, and so a new quartet that I was in, uh, we decided that we wanted to do greater things, and just go in another direction. So um, it was my quartet, and my daughter, and one of the members, she had two daughters. Um, they were 12, 13, and 14 at the time, so you, you know, whatever. So, um, and then another member who lived in Athens, uh, she had two daughters. So we, had, we it was kind of just a very small group. We got together and decided we had to find a place, and that's how we started this course. And that we started the it, course that you have now. Yeah, this right. Is actually how it yeah, began. it began, and uh, we uh, resigned from the other one and found a meeting place, and and we all put up a little bit of money. I you mean, know what year was that? Well, that would have been in May of. 77, no, of 87, May of 87. And uh, we had our first rehearsal, uh, and gosh, we had like 35 people there. It was awesome, you know. So um, we began to work, and and, uh, and and we chartered in January of the following year, 88. And um, there you was, have to have a certain membership? You have yeah. to have, uh, I think it's 16, but we had, I think, 30, maybe, maybe, chartered. Uh, we went to our first contest, and uh, <laughs> we came in one point out of fifth, out of meddling. My gosh, do you think we were hung to moon, you know? <laughs> and, uh, that was the last time that we stayed out of the middle, so we did better really? after that, yeah. But we couldn't win. Uh, we, had, we had... But you were consistently then up it, We were all just hanging right in there, and we, we got tons of third place ribbons through the years. Um, but we had Seven Hills, which is, you know, where Cincinnati Sound came from. They were international champions, so we'd have to deal with them every other year. And then Gem City that Gene Crawford directed in... in uh, Date at the time, and they won international four or five times. I mean, you know, so it was like a, a huge, you know, obstacle. And so it took us a lot of years and a lot of, uh, but we just kept growing. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what people just started coming from over where. And it's funny because we really didn't, we talked a few times about merging with, with Columbus Course, but they weren't going the way we wanted to go. and and. It'd be a question of who was the director, I mean, who, you know, whatever. And so we just stayed our course and... Uh, Were you the director of this course? Of this one from day one, yeah. When we first started talking about our quartet would get together and we would talk about what happened if we... Uh, I wouldn't even go into the, all the details of how this all happened, but if we started another chorus, we could take turns, because we were all in the front row, we could take turns one night you could be the director and you could be on the front row and you could be on the second row and you could be the president and stand on the third row. We, we had it all figured out and then the next week we'd all change, you know. So, I mean, we tried everything we could think of just to kind of get us. We said, no, we're never going to do this, but we did. Anyway, so uh, it's, it's been a, a really fun time.